Hi everyone, welcome to Singing How to Study Chinese. This is HSK Level 1 course, and I'm your teacher, Ronnie. Today we are going to learn lesson 10. 我能坐这儿吗? 我能坐这儿吗? Which means, can I sit here? Okay, now let's move on to our warm up. Warm up. There are six pictures and six new words. And first, let's see this one is 工作. 工作. 工作, which means job. We are really familiar with it already. Okay, next one is 看书. 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 看, we've learned, it means look, watch, read, and sometimes even visit. And 书 means book, so 看书 is read book. Okay, next one is 坐. 坐. This one is a new one, it means to sit or to be seated. And next one is 桌子. 桌子. This means desk. Desk. Next one is 电脑. 电脑, which means computer. And last one, really easy. 爸爸和妈妈. 爸爸和妈妈. 爸爸, we know, it means father. Mama means mom, and he actually means and. So this means father and mother. Now let's try to fill in the blanks. I will give you 10 seconds. Okay, time's up. First one, 工作. 工作 is F because it looks like these four people are discussing something in our office. Next one, 看书, really easy is C. Next, 坐, to sit, to be seated is B. Exactly, and 桌子, the desk is A. Next one, 电脑 is D. And last one, 爸爸和妈妈, obviously, is E. Okay, let's move on to our text one. Text one. Let's first see the new words. This one, 桌子, we've seen it in the warm-up part. 桌子, read up to me, please. 桌子, 桌子. Z is the neutral tone. Please pay attention to it, neutral tone. 桌子, 桌子. Okay, it means desk, table. Still remember how to say chairs. Chairs. Okay, chairs are easy, right? Easy. Okay, read up to me. Easy. Easy. This is chairs. Chairs. Okay, easy. Next, let's say under the table. Under the table. How to say under the table? We've learned something under something before. The under surface of something. Under space. The lower space of something is 下 or 下面, right? 下 or 下面. So under the table is 桌子下面. 桌子下面, okay? 桌子下面. Actually, it means 桌子的下面, okay? You can just Try to remember 桌子下面 as 桌子的下面. Okay, this is under the table. Next one is 上, 上, 上. This one, although here it is marked as a neutral tone, but it is used, uh, when it is used individually, 上 is a fourth tone word, fourth tone. But because in this text, shang is combining with other elements in the sentence, so it is neutral tone, okay? It, it, when it is used individually, please remember it is fourth tone, fourth tone. And it means up and above, up and above. Actually, we've come across this character many times before. For example, like in the morning is shang wu, right? Or to say, 早上, these two ways to express morning. In these two words, we all have 上, this character inside it. And so we already know how to say under, 
under that is xianian or xia then how to say upper space or upper surface upper surface it, it is shang mian right shang mian shang mian or shang shang mian or shang so how to say on the desk on the desk it is Zhuozi shang mian or zhuozi shang. Okay, zhuozi shang mian or zhuozi shang. Okay, very good. Next one is dian nao, de yan, dian, ne ao nao, dian nao. Read up to me, please. Dian nao, dian nao, dian nao. Please pay attention to the nao. It is a third tone word, but because it is in a disorbic word, so we will read it as a half third tone, okay? Dian nao, dian nao. Okay, means computer, computer. And how to say one computer? One computer. We've learned how to express this kind of structure. It is the number plus a major word and plus the noun we want to describe. So one computer is yi ge dian nao. When we are not familiar with this word and we don't know which major word we are going to use, then we can use ge, the general major word, okay? So yi ge dian nao, yi ge dian nao means one computer. Okay, now let's move on to the next word. He, 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 he. Read after me, please. He, he, he. It means end, end. So whenever you want to express A and B, you can say A he B. A he B. Okay. This is the way to say A and B. For example, in the warm-up part, we've learned father and mother, which is Baba he Mama. Baba he Mama. Okay. So let's move on to next word, which is Ben Bo N. Ben, read off to me, please. Ben, Ben, Ben. It is a major word for notebooks or books or everything other looks like a book. Okay. So, for example, how to say one book? One book. We will use the structure again. The number plus a major word and plus the none we are going to describe. So, Yi ben shu, right? Yi ben shu, yi ben shu. Okay, this is the answer. So if you don't understand why I changed the e into e, please go back to check your notebook and see there are tones sandy about e. Okay, tones sandy about e. Yi ben shu. Okay. Now how to say one Chinese book? A Chinese book. Then it is Yi Ban Han Yu Shu. Yi Ban Han Yu Shu. Try not to say Zhong Guo Shu because in this word, Chinese book. Chinese means the language, not the nationality. So we will use Han Yu instead of Zhong Guo. Okay, so it is Yi Ban Han Yu Shu instead of even Zhongguo Shu, okay? Next one. When I want to say two Chinese books, is it Erben Han Yu Shu ma? Is it? it? No, it's not Er, it is Liang Ben, okay? Liang Ben, Le Yang Liang. Le Yang Liang, pay attention to it. When we are counting numbers in Chinese, when we are saying one, two, three, four, in this way, we will use two, we will use er. But when we are saying there are two things, two books, two days, two years, then we will use liang, okay? For example, liang ben shu, liang ge dian nao, liang tian, tian means days, liang ge yue, yue means month, liang Nian Nian means years. So as you can see, you are using Liang instead of Er. Okay, please pay attention to it. 
and try to say, I want to buy a Chinese book. I want to buy a Chinese book. It is 我想买一本汉语书. For this sentence, the subject is 我爱. And then the predicate is want to buy something, right? Want to buy a Chinese book. And inside it, the modal verb want to is 想 and buy is 买. So 想买. And a Chinese book is 一本汉语书. So this sentence is 我想买一本汉语书. Okay, now let's move on to our last new word for text one is 礼. When it is used individually, it is a third tone word, third tone. But inside this text, it is when it is used with other elements, it is a neutral tone. Please read after me. Li, li, li. Okay, means inside something or inner interior. Okay, inside something. So when I say jia li, jia li, it means inside home, in home. So how to say in school? In school. It is 学校里, 学校里, very good. And in hospital is 医院里, 医院里, the word we learned in last lesson. And how to say in desk, in the desk. We just learned it. It is 桌子里, right? 桌子里, okay? How to say inside a computer? Inside the computer, it is 电脑里, 电脑里. Very good, very good. Now let's try to read it from the start each word twice. Three, two, one. 桌子, 桌子, 上, 上, 电脑, 电脑, 和, 和, 本, 本, 里, 里. Okay, now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 桌子上有什么? 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书。杯子在哪儿? 杯子在桌子里。Okay, now let's see sentence by sentence. First one, 桌子上. 桌子上 is the simplified way to say 桌子上面, okay? 桌子上 is just enough to express our meaning, our intention. Okay, 桌子上, on the table. 有什么? 有 means have, and it is indicating the existence of things, existence. So 有什么 means there be something, there be something. So it actually means what, what are there on the desk? What are there on the desk? Okay, 桌子上有什么? So we can see here, first is the location. And then there is a verb. And then there is an object. Okay, location. On the location, there be there be something, okay? This is the structure of how to express something on something. Next one is 桌子上有, you can see on the table there are 一个电脑和一本书, 一个电脑 means a computer, 和, here it is the new word, and, and, 和一本书, a computer and a book. 一个电脑和一本书. And it asked again, 杯子在哪儿? 杯子在哪儿? It is the structure we've learned before about expressing how to ask about where is something or someone. Something or someone. 杯子在哪儿? Means where is the cup? Where is the cup? So this is the subject plus 在哪儿, okay, the subject plus 在哪儿. Next is 杯子在桌子里, 杯子在桌子里. 
Face is in the desk. Is in the desk. Face 在桌子里 So this is something at something at somewhere. Okay, this is the structure. Something at somewhere. Okay, really easy. So now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me, please. 桌子上有什么？桌子上有一个电脑和一本书。杯子在哪儿？杯子在桌子里。Okay, now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. Okay, three, two, one. 桌子上有什么？杯子在哪儿？ Okay, let's switch the row. Three, two, one. 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书。杯子在桌子里。Okay, this is text one. Now let's move on to our next text. So we can see here are two new words and two proper nouns. First one is 前面。前面，七言前，莫言面。We see 面 here, which is really familiar. We learned it from 上面 and 下面 right? 上面 and 下面 And here, 前面 means front, front. And next one, 后面和 o 后后面 means back, back. So we've learned four words about spaces. One, 上面 One, 下面 Another one, 前面 Another one, 后面 Okay, 上面下面前面后面 Okay, try to read with me. Okay, 上面上面下面下面前面前面后面后面 Okay, very good. So try to make some sentences. How to say in the front? In the front. In the front is we've learned in at on is 在 right? So in the front is 在前面在前面 Okay, this is this is in the front 在前面 Okay, if I want to say in the at back, at the back, then it is 在后面 Yes, 在后面在前面 and 在后面 Okay, my front. Try to say my front. My front. 我的前面 right? You, you, and in this phrase, you can just get rid of the 的 You can just say 我前面我前面 Okay. Now try to say my back, my back. It is 我后面，我后面。Next one. He is in my front. He is in my front. So in this sentence, who is the subject? He, right? He. So we will put he at the beginning of the sentence. So 他 Next one, we will need a predicate, predicate, which is. Be in on at somewhere, right? Be in on at. We need that, which is 在在 So 他在 And the location, the direction is my front, my front. So let's put the direction at the last, which is 我前面 So this sentence is 他在我前面 The subject, the verb, and the location. Okay. So we'll try to say he is at my back. He is at my back. Then it is, 他在我后面 right? 他在我后面 Okay. Now try to say, um, the one in the front, the person in the front, the person in the front. 
this one is a little bit tricky. It is, it is a phrase, it is not a sentence. The person in the front. So the in the front is actually describing the person, right? Describing the person. So we will put this part at the before the person, okay? So it is 前面的人, 前面的人. So in this phrase, actually, we are using 前面的 as an adjective to describe 人, okay? 前面的人. So the person at back actually is 后面的人, right? 后面的人, 后面的人. Or if you want to specifically just point in someone, which is that person, for example, that first person in the front. Then we can say 前面那个人, 前面那个人, okay? 前面那个人, that person in the front, 前面那个人. And that person at the back is 后面那个人, okay? 后面那个人. Try to say the person, that person in the front. Listen carefully. That person in the front is Teacher Lee. That person in the front is Teacher Lee. How to say that? It is first that for that person in the front. How to say that? It is 前面那个人, right? 前面那个人, and is Teacher Lee is 是李老师. So 前面那个人是李老师. Okay. 前面那个人是李老师. And now try to say the person at the back, that person at the back is my friend. That person at the back is my friend. 后面那个人, right? 后面那个人是我朋友. 后面那个人是我朋友. Okay. That is enough for the two new words. Now let's move on to our proper nouns. One is Wang Fang. Wang Fang. Read up to me, please. Wang Fang. Wang Fang. It's a, it's a name in Chinese. And in this name, Wang is the family name, the last name. And Fang is the first name. So we can see in Chinese, we will put the last name, the family name at the beginning. And then we will say the, say our first name. And usually, usually Chinese names are two characters or three characters, okay? Sometimes it will be four characters or more. But mostly, mostly Chinese names are two to three characters. And for ethnic minorities, their names will be much longer. Okay, so this is Wang Fang. Next one is Xie Peng. Read up to me, please. Xie Peng. Xie Peng. So try to guess which one is the last name. It is Xie. Xie is the last name and Peng is the first name. Okay, very good. Now let's try to read from the start each for twice. Okay, three, two, one. 前面, 前面. 后面, 后面. Okay, now let's move on to our text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 前面那个人叫什么名字? 他叫王芳, 后面那个人呢? 他叫什么名字? 他叫谢鹏, 在商店工作。Okay, in this text, we can see there are many structures we've learned before. Okay, first one is 前面那个人叫什么名字? 前面那个人叫什么名字? 前面那个人, we already learned it, it means the person in the front. And 叫什么名字 is, is a structure we've learned before we mentioned. What is this person's name? 叫什么名字? What is the name? What is the name? 叫什么名字? So this is asking about the person in the front. Who is this person in the front? And the answer, 
Ta Jiao Wang Fang. Her name is Wang Fang. Her name is Wang Fang. Zai Yi Yuan Gong Zuo. Let's see it. Zai a place. Do something. This is the structure we've learned before. In there it is the the series of verbs, the verbs in series, right? Zai is the verb one and Gong Zuo is the verb two and Yi Yuan is the location for Zai. And when sometimes this location, when it is not that important, we can get rid of it, ignore it. Okay. Zai Yi Yuan Gong Zuo working at the hospital. In this sentence, Working at the hospital, hospital is very important information, so we won't omit it. Next one, 后面那个人呢? 后面那个人, the person at the back, and 呢, which means it is asking about something mentioned before or the time or the location of this subject. So in this sentence, it is really obviously we are asking about the things mentioned before. For example, like what name and where does this person work, right? No, no. And 他叫什么名字? What is his name? 他叫什么名字? And the last sentence, 他叫谢鹏. His name is 谢鹏. 在商店工作, he work in the shop. He work in the shop. 在 a place, do something. Do something. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me. 前面那个人叫什么名字? 他叫王芳,在医院工作. 后面那个人呢? 他叫什么名字? 他叫谢鹏,在商店工作. Okay, now let's Read it in the row, I will be A and you will be B. 前面那个人叫什么名字? 后面那个人呢? 他叫什么名字? 他叫什么名字? OK, let's switch the row. 3, 2, 1. 他叫王芳,在医院工作。他叫谢鹏,在商店工作。Okay, very good. Now let's move on to text three. There are four new words. First one is 这儿, which means here, here. We've already learned how to say there. Remember how to say it? It is nar, right? Nar. So we can see here is this plus a er, zhe plus a er, and there is na plus a er, that plus a er, nar. And where, how to say that? Where is Nar, right? Nar. Okay, very good. Nar. Now I'll try to say your book is here. Your book is here. Your book is here. This is Ni the shoe is your book, right? Ni the shoe and is here is Zai Jer. Zai Jer. Every time we want to express the location, we will use Zai. Okay, Zai. Ni the shoe, Zai Jer. Okay, next one is 没有, 没, 没有有, 没有, read up to me please, 没有, 没有, okay, so pay attention to this 有, we should read it as half the tone, right, and we can also say just 没, 没有 or 没, these two can, can both express there is nothing, there is not something, okay, there is not, for example, there is not Chinese book. There is not Chinese book. There is no Chinese book, which is 没有汉语书, okay, 没有汉语书. If you want to say there is not something, there is nothing, you just say 没有 plus that thing, okay? For example, try to make a sentence this time, not phrase. I don't have Chinese book. 
I don't have Chinese book. It is 我 don't have 没有汉语书我没有汉语书 I don't have Chinese book. And I don't have Chinese friend is 我没有中国朋友 Okay, 我没有中国朋友 and there is no one, no people, 没有人, and here is no one, there is no one here, it is 这儿没有人, okay, 这儿没有人, here is no one. It is just like the way we said, we learned in text one, like 桌子上有什么, it is 这儿没有什么, okay? This is the same structure. We will put the location at the beginning, okay? The location. Next one is 能, 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 read up to me, please. 能, 能, it is a modal verb, which means be able to do something, be able to do something, can, may, can, may. And we learned another modal verb, which has a really similar meaning with it which is hui, right? Hui, it means to acquire an ability by learning, by learning. And neng is can, may, can, may. The last one is zuo, 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 read after me, please. Zuo, zuo, we've seen it in the warm-up part, it means to sit or to be seated, to be seated. So when I say qing zuo, qing zuo, we've learned qing, which means please. Please, so 请坐 means please sit, please sit. Okay, so I want to say please sit here, please sit here. Then it is 请坐这儿, 请坐这儿, please sit here, 请坐这儿. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Okay, eat for twice, three, two, one. 这儿, 这儿, 没有, 没有, 能, 能做, okay, now let's move on to the text. I will read it and please listen carefully. 这儿有人吗? 没有 我能坐这儿吗? 请坐 Okay, this text is really easy. First, it is asking about is there anyone which means, is this seat taken? Can I sit here? Can I sit here? 这儿有人吗? 这儿有人吗? Here, anybody here? And you is expressing the existence, existence of something. And 没有, 没有, we just learned, there is not. It is the negative form of 有, negative form of 有, okay? So, 有, for you, the negative form is 没有, it is not 不有, okay? It's not 不有, it's 没有. Next sentence, 我能坐这儿吗? 我能坐这儿吗? Can I sit here? So, 能 plus a verb means can do something, can do something. And can I sit here? 我能坐这儿吗? The subject, 我, the person is always at the beginning here. Okay, last sentence is, 请坐, please sit, please sit. Okay, now let's try to read it from the start. Read after me. 这儿有人吗? 没有. 我能坐这儿吗? 请坐. Okay, now let's try to read it in rows. I will be A and you will be B. 这儿有人吗? 我能坐这儿吗? Now let's switch the row. Please start. 没有. 请坐. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to our language point. First one is 有, the 有 sentence, which indicates the existence, okay? Indicating the existence. So this verb 有, 有, can be used in some sentences to indicate a person or something exist, exist. And for example, this one, 椅子下面有一只小狗, 椅子下面 
有一只小狗。So first we can see is 下面 is a word or a phrase of locality. So this is first part of this structure location, and then we will put 有 here 有 and then the things we want to say the personal thing. For example, 一只小狗一只小狗 Okay, this is the structure of it. And let's see next one. 学校里有一个商店。学校里 another word for location. 学校里 means in the school, right? In the school. 学校里有一个商店。Next, 桌子上 on the table. The location you have 一个电脑和一本书 a computer and a book. And this is the Positive form of 有 and when we are using the negative form of 有 which is 没有没有 okay, there is something we need to pay attention to. For example, 椅子下面没有小狗 Let's see the difference. First is the 没有 is the negative form of 有 Next one, the location is the same. Is 下面 okay? Next one, let's see 小狗 and 一只小狗 Let's see these two. What's the difference between them? What's the difference between them? In the positive form, we can see there is a numeral classifier. 一只 one one dog, right? 一只 a number plus a measure word. But in the negative form, we cannot see the numeral classifier. So this is what we need to pay attention to. In the pause in the negative form of your sentence, which is 没有没有 we won't use a numeral classifier before the noun before the object of the sentence. Okay, so for this one, in this one noun, we actually have a have a number and then a major word before the noun. Okay. But for this, no numeral classifier. No numeral classifier. Just location plus 没有 Okay, plus 没有 something. 没有 something. This is the structure. This is the structure. Okay. Now let's see another two sentences. Next one is 学校里没有商店，没有商店。So before the 商店 ，we cannot see the numeral classifier. Next one, 桌子上没有电脑和书。So before the 电脑 and before the 书 ，there is no numeral classifiers like 一个 and even nothing, just 电脑和书。This is the 有 sentence indicating the existence. The location plus you or may you and plus the object. Next, next is about the conjunction 和 which means and, which means and. So and is 和 is used to connect two or two more elements in the sentence. So for example, first example we can see here is 我有一个中国朋友和一个美国朋友。You can see 和 is used to connect 一个中国朋友 and 一个美国朋友和 connected these two phrases, and we can see here. Next one is really special. 我家有三口人。我家有三口人 It means there are three people in my family. 口 is the con. 口 is the major word for. Family members, right? And 爸爸妈妈和我爸爸妈妈和我 There are three elements that in this sentence we need you to use 和 to connect. So in this situation, when there are more than one, more than two elements, we need 和 to connect. Then we will use 和 just between the last two elements, between the last two elements, and the elements before. We will use this symbol, a dot, a dot, which is a slight pause, a、uh, slight pause mark. 
to connect the other, to connect or separate the other elements in that sentence. Okay. So this is it. Just use he in between the last two elements. Okay. Don't use it in before. Just one time. He will just show up one time. Next one, last example. 桌子上有一个电脑和一本书. This sentence is from our text. 一个电脑, one computer and a book. And a book. And pay attention to this part, this thing. 和 actually, although it means and, but the usage of it is not the same as the English and. 和 is not the same as and, okay? In English, and can use to connect two sentences, but he cannot. He can only use to connect two words, two elements, two phrases, not sentences. So if you say, 我爸爸是医生和我妈�ma是医生, it's wrong in Chinese, although it is okay in English. So for example, my father is a doctor and my mother is a doctor. It's normal. There's nothing wrong with this sentence in English, but in Chinese, no, it's wrong. We won't say that. We will only say 我爸爸和我妈妈是医生. Okay, 我爸爸和我妈妈. There are two elements, two small elements, not sentences. Okay, but 我爸爸是医生, it's a full sentence. 我妈妈是医生 is another full sentence. We won't connect these two using 和. Okay, this is what we need to pay attention to. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. The modal verb 能, 能, it is always used before the verb. And the structure it makes is 能 plus a verb. Okay, plus a verb. 能 means can do something, can do something. And the negative form of it is 不能. We will put a 不 before it. 不能. Okay. For example, this one, 明天下午我能去商店. 明天下午, tomorrow afternoon, 我能去商店. I am the subject, subject, okay, subject, 能去, can go to the shop, can go to the shop. Okay, next one is a question. 你能在这儿写你的名字吗? Okay, let's see the structure of it. First one is the subject, 你, and then is 能 plus a verb, 在, 能在. 在 can be a verb and it can be a preposition too. So this time it is a verb, 能在, 在 where, 在 here, 在这儿, 在这儿. What do what? 写你的名字吗? Can you write here? Okay, can you write here? So this is the Question. So if you want to ask a question by using 能, then you just need to put a ma after this sentence and put a question mark after it, okay? This is the question, interrogative form of 能. And last one, 我能坐这儿吗? Can I sit here? I, 我 is the subject. 能 plus the verb 坐, sit here, sit. Okay, and try to make a sentence. He cannot work. He can't work. This time we need to use the negative form of 能. So this is 他不能工作, right? 他不能工作. The subject is 他 and then 不能 and then the verb 工作. And if I ask a question, can you study? Then how to say it? Can you study? It is 你能学习吗? Yes, 你能学习吗? Okay, now let's move on to the next one. Next one is the imperative sentence with 请请. So imperative sentences are about um, giving an order and request, a request or prohibition or suggestions. This kind of sentences are imperative sentences. Okay, so after the 请, if we put a verb, then it makes an imperative sentence. And it is, um, it can be form a polite suggestion or hope. Okay, let's see some examples. First one, 请写您的名字. 请, after 请, we put the verb 写, 
which means write. 请写您的名字 Please write your name. 您 the polite way to say you. Okay, please write your name. Next one. 请喝茶 Please drink tea. Please drink tea. 请坐 Please sit. We can see this is really polite. Really polite to express your request. So when you are asking about someone, you can say 请问 right? 请问 Okay, this is about 请 And next. Next, let's do some exercises. You can see first sentence. For first sentence, there is only you here and two blanks. Two blanks. And or we learned already, you means existence of something. And in you sentences, we will put the location plus a you and then something, which means something exists on somewhere. Okay, let's see the picture. There is a table and a chair, and on the table there is a cup. So how to say it? How to say it? On the table there is a cup. So first the location is on the table. So it is 桌子上 right? 桌子上 the same as the text. 桌子上有 a cup is 一个杯子一个杯子 okay? 一个杯子 Next one is still you, but we need to use he. He means and, which means we will connect two elements here. And before you, there is a location, right? Location. So try to fill in the blanks. We can see there is a desk, and on the table there are books and a、uh, and a、uh, and the computer. Okay, try to say it on the table. 桌子上，桌子上有书和一个电脑。Okay, 桌子上有书和一个电脑。Next one. It looks like in the pub, and one man is what asking about asking another man, and their facial expressions are really relaxed. Relax. 我能什么吗？我能。Ma, it is. I think some this person is asking about. Can I sit here, right? Can I sit here? So, 我能坐这儿吗？我能坐这儿 Sit here, 坐这儿 Okay, last one. 他在工作 He is working. He is working. So, how to say this? How to say this? How to say this? He is working. 他在商店工作 He is working in the shop. In the shop. So 他在商店工作 Or we can say more specifically, 他在商店里工作商店里 He was working inside the shop. Inside the shop. Okay. 他在商店里工作 And next, let's move on to our. This exercise, new exercise, choose a suitable measure word to fill in each blank. Okay, I will give you, I will give you half a minute and try to fill in the blanks. Okay, time's up. Now let's see. First one. 我家有三什么人？我家有 means there are three people in our family. So about the family, we will use the co, right? We will use co for the family members. Next one. 我买一我的杯子 About 杯子 we can use a general measure word, which is 个 Next one. 我有五汉语书，五汉语书，汉语书，书 ，which is the measure word， 本 ，right？ 本 ，we just learned it today。Last one， 
以则八十钱。For the measure word of money is 快 or 远 Okay, 快 So this is the answers. Let's move on. Next part is the pronunciation of neutral tone syllables. Neutral tone syllables. For these neutral tone syllables, we actually have the pitch. The pitch will be different. Okay, first let's see these tables and the and the words. And please pay attention to the pitch when I when I am speaking. Okay, and I will use my hand to indicate the pitch. First one, 桌子，桌子 We can see z is the neutral tone, and the pitch of z is lower than 桌 right? 桌子 The next one is 盘子，盘子 means plate, plate. 盘子 The neutral tone is lower too, right? Next one is the chair, 椅子，椅子 This time neutral tone is higher. Last time, last one. 裤子，裤子 This means trousers, pants, and 裤子 This time the neutral tone is lower. So this is the rule for it. When the neutral tone is after the first, second, and fourth, okay, first, second, and fourth tone, then the pitch of the neutral tone will be lower. Okay, lower. But when it is after the third tone, the pitch of the neutral tone will be higher. Okay, read after me. 桌子，桌子，盘子，盘子。椅子，椅子，裤子，裤子。Okay, now let's move on to next one. Just remember the rules. Next one, next part is the pronunciation of reduplicated syllables. For reduplicated syllables, it means there are two same syllables together. Especially,、mm, there are two same characters put together, and there's Their their sound will be different. For example, first one is 爸爸爸爸 two same characters, which means father father. And this second 爸 is actually changed into the neutral tone. Okay, neutral tone. So this is in a dissyllabic word with reduplicated syllables. The second one will usually. Be read in the neutral tone. Okay, neutral tone. And please don't forget the first rule we learned: the pitch about the neutral tone's pitch. It will change, right? Before when the neutral tone is after for the first, second, and the fourth, it will be lower. So ba 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 ba. Okay, let's try to practice next one. Read after me: mama, mama, because it is after the. First tone, so it is lower. Okay, next one is 爷爷，爷爷 Second tone, so lower too. Next one, 奶奶，奶奶 It is grandmother. It is higher because it is after a third tone. Okay, try to read after me another one. This one, 哥哥，哥哥 It's lower. Next, ah,、uh, 哥哥 means brother, older brother. Okay, next one. 姐姐，姐姐，姐姐 It means sister, older sister, because it is after a third tone, so it's higher. 姐姐 Next one is younger brother, 弟弟，弟弟 Next, younger sister, 妹妹，妹妹 Okay, so try to practice more and pay attention to the pitch of the. In the reduplicated syllables. Okay. Now let's move on. Move on to the pronunciation of words with the suffix. 门子头 So for these three characters, when they are used individually, they are 门子 and 头 But when they are acting as a suffix, they are all neutral tone. Neutral tone. So for example, first one. 你们 we are really familiar with it. It means you, the plural version of it, plural version of you. 你们 men is the neutral tone. Next one, 我们 means we, right? 我们 neutral tone too. Let's see, 子 the suffix 子桌子 we just learned it today means table, desk. 桌子桌子 
zi is the neutral tone. And yi zi, we learned it in last lesson, which means chair. Yi zi, zi is the neutral tone too. Next one, shi tao, shi tao. Actually, to is a second tone, but when it is a suffix, it is a neutral tone. Shi tao, it means town, town. Shi tao. Next one, zhen tao, zhen tao. See, the pitch is rising up. Zhen tao, it means pillow. Next one, qian tao, qian tao, qian tao. It means front, in the front. Next one, ho tao, ho tao. Hoto is another way to say in the back, at the back, okay, hoto. So pay attention to the pitch of the neutral tone every time you come across the neutral tone, okay? Now, next one, let's see the single component characters. First one is shang, shang, which means up, above, shang. And it indicates the, actually, in, it indicates the borderline for the for the upper space, okay? So let's see how to write it. First, we will write a vertical in the middle and then a short horizontal in the middle of the vertical and then a long horizontal. Try to write it again. It is really easy. Vertical, horizontal, and horizontal. Again, vertical, horizontal, horizontal. Please try to write it mm, don't try to write it like this. Don't make, make this horizontal too long. And don't make this vertical too long. And don't make this too short, okay? To make it in a harmony. Next one is xia, which means down, down, below. Okay, this is just, just reversed shang. Okay, just reversed shang. First, we will write a long horizontal and a vertical. And then this time, it is not a horizontal, it's a dot. Okay, try to write it with me. Horizontal, vertical, dot. Again, horizontal, vertical, dot. It is really easy. So try to practice it more and pay attention to this. This is a dot and this is a horizontal. Next one is ben, the major word for books, ben. Okay. It looked like a tree. It looked like a tree in the ancient time. Okay. So first it is a horizontal and then a vertical and then a left turning and then a right turning and then a short horizontal. Now try to write it with me. Horizontal, vertical, left turning, right turning and then a horizontal. Next. Horizontal. Vertical, left turning, right turning, horizontal. Again, horizontal, vertical, left turning, right turning, horizontal. This is the ban, ban. And actually, this part means the root of the tree in ancient time, ancient time. Next one is more, more or more. Why are we going to learn this? Because it is the opposite to ban. Ban is the root, the origin of something, and more. Mu is the tip, the end of something. So we can see in ancient time, these two look like the same, but the dot's position are different. In Ben, the dot's position is at the root of the tree, but in Mu, this dot is at the tip of the tree, the tip of the tree, okay, the trenches. So this is about Mu. Now try to see, how to write it? First, a long horizontal, okay, and then a short one under it, and then a vertical uh, left turning and a right turning. Try to write it with me. Long one, short one, a uh, vertical left, right. Again, long, short, vertical left, right. Again, long, short, vertical left, right. So try to pay attention to it. Don't write the long one under the short one because that will be another character, which means the future or undone, okay? This is not more, it is we. This one is we, it's not more. Now let's see, next one, next new word. Uh, so this is about the characters. 
the structure of the characters. Last time we learned the half enclosure, half enclosure. This time is the full enclosure one, full enclosure, complete enclosure. The first, the first example is four, si. We can say this frame here is closing the four, right? It is closing it. And next one for the country, guo, this structure is closing it too. So we can see it is the full closure, full closure structures. I will write it bigger and you can see it clearer. This frame outside it is closing the character. And for guo is the same. The rectangle is closing this, the rectangle outside. Okay, this is the full enclosure, complete enclosure structure. This one is really easy to remember and really easy to distinguish. And the last part of today's lesson is the Chinese radicals to new radicals. First one is the guo zi kuang. We just seen it in the guo, guo zi kuang. Guo means country, guo means country, and zi means character, kuang means frame. So this is the radical guo zi kuang, radical this. It looks like Kou, right? But it is different. This one is bigger and ko is smaller, like this, if compared to guo zi kuang, radical ko. Okay, so this guo zi kuang is usually meaning being trapped or being besieged. For example, like this, guo, guo. Actually, guo has borders, country has borders, so we use this frame, this radical to express country. Next one, kun, kun, kun. It means to be trapped. If you want to trap something, then you will use something like this to trap. So this is why we use guo zi kuang to make this character, kun, to trap. And next one is shi zi pang, shi, shi zi pang. Okay, this, this radical is actually a variant of this character, which is shi. That's why it is called shi zi pang, shi zi pang. And it is usually related to some rituals, rituals, sacrificial rites or something. And first one is shi. Shi it means to look, to look, to view, okay, to look. To view. Please pay attention to this word. We might come across it with it in next lesson. Okay, shi to look to reveal. Next one is zhu to wish to wish. And in ancient time, this um, to wish something is this action is conducted by the witches. That's why we will have this shi zi pang shi radical beside it okay this is these two radicals for today one is guo zi kuang which means trap border one is shi zi pang which means which is always related to the rites the rituals okay so this is all for today's lesson thanks for listening see you next time bye bye